Hey guys, it's Brittany and welcome back. Today I'm coming to you with a newly launched fragrance brand and that is called Seneca Parfums. Now, Seneca is a company based out of Australia and they take high quality ingredients and they create and craft these one of a kind fragrances that are inspired by some of your favorite top selling, top performing, branded fragrances. And that goes for both the designer fragrances and also those niche fragrances, those more expensive fragrances that you want but your pockets don't allow you to have. So today I will be comparing three of the fragrances that Seneca was kind enough to send along to me all the way from Australia. And we'll go through those three fragrances and comparing them to the real thing that I do have in my fragrance stash. And we'll see how well they perform against the fragrances that they are inspired by. So if you want to hear all about this new brand's fragrances, the performance, the quality, is it worth it? then stay tuned. As always, first I wanna thank everyone for always being around, being subscribed to my channel and sharing my channel as well. I truly appreciate all the love and the growth that I've seen in these past couple of months. And if you're just finding my channel and you have not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Make sure you subscribe because I do tons of fragrance reviews. I do hair and protective styles. I also do true crime and makeup, skincare and true crime, and some other things as well. So you don't wanna miss out on all the content that I have coming for you. Also make sure you like the video. It means the world to me when you do like and interact and comment as well. But let's hop into these Seneca fragrances. Seneca, again, was kind enough to send me a cute little package of three fragrances that they have handcrafted in Australia that are inspired by three fragrances that I have in my fragrance stash. So I wanted to take a look at packaging first. This company is literally just recently launched. So I think for what it's worth, the packaging is pretty good. I like black packaging. If you follow me, you know I'm a sucker for black and white clean packaging. Throw a little metallic in there and I'm sold. So I like this. It says it's procured in France and Switzerland, handcrafted in Australia. They're premium niche inspired fragrances and it says transformational limitless. So I really love, first of all, that this company is not out here to be a dupe company. They really want you to understand that they are taking inspiration from these niche fragrances and these designer fragrances, and they are really crafting their own thing from it. So you get a different experience. Sometimes it may be a similar experience, but not always. So always keep that in mind with these types of companies as well. They're not necessarily out to be a dupe. Y'all know I'm gonna test the longevity. Y'all know that I'm gonna test silage. We'll talk about all of that stuff once we hop into these fragrances. So the three fragrances that Seneca sent over to me were the Black Orchid by Tom Ford. They also sent me Good Girl Gone Bad by Killian and Rolling in Love by Killian as well. So these are, like I said, three fragrances that I do already have in my stash. So now it's time to hop in and compare each of these and see what we get. So I am gonna start with the lightest or what I consider the lightest of the three fragrances and that is gonna be the Killian Rolling in Love. Now Killian Rolling in Love is a amber floral fragrance and it's supposed to be for both men and women. I think that this does lean a little bit towards women, more feminine of a fragrance. That's just my opinion. But taking a quick look at notes, the top notes are almond milk and ambrette. The middle notes are iris and freesia, and the base notes are tuberose, vanilla, tonka bean, and musk. The Seneca website doesn't necessarily list out all of the notes for their versions or their fragrances that are inspired by these branded fragrances. So we'll just jump into the scent test. So I have the Seneca version of Killian's Rolling in Love running down this arm. 
and I have the original version on this arm. I am just gonna let that dry down for a second. All right, so when I am taking my initial sniffs of the two fragrances, the Seneca fragrance is definitely more sweet than the Killian Rolling in Love fragrance. With the Killian fragrance, I definitely get more of that nutty, almondy scent versus with this one, I'm getting much more floral, much more amber, not as much of the nutty scent. So I think that the nutty scent for me in the Killian Rolling in Love is actually what makes it work as a male fragrance because that kind of overpowers a little bit of that floral fragrance, the sweetness of the Rolling in Love. With the Seneca version, this is definitely geared more towards women. I wouldn't suggest a man where it, it, it doesn't have the nutty component to it to kind of tone down the rest of the more feminine scents that are in the fragrance. I do like it. And over time, that nuttiness does go away a little bit as it dries down a bit more, but it's still present there. So I can tell the difference between the two. Again, Seneca was not trying to create a dupe for the Rolling in Love, but I think they did a good job at creating a more feminine version. I think this is definitely geared towards women and they did a really good job in terms of creating more of a feminine version of that. In terms of longevity, if you can see the shine on my arm, then I always take that as somewhat of a good sign in terms of the amount of oil was being used in the fragrance. The concentration or the longevity and the sillage of a fragrance depends on how heavily concentrated the fragrance is with fragrance oils, alcohols, all of that. So the higher percentage of fragrance oils that are usually in a fragrance is a good indicator of it lasting longer. That's where you get the tears of the fragrance perfumes from where you have an Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and an actual parfum. So your parfum has the highest concentration. Eau de Toilettes usually have the lowest concentration of the perfume oils. I feel like the longevity is definitely there with these fragrances. There is a good amount of concentration of the actual oils in the fragrances, and I can definitely appreciate that. All right, now let's move on to the next fragrance. And that is the Killian Good Girl Gone Bad. Now, this is one of my favorite fragrances of the Killian brand. I love this fragrance. So I'm excited to see how well this one compares to the real fragrance. Now, this hand is the Seneca and this hand is the Killian Good Girl Gone Bad. Now, the Good Girl Gone Bad by Killian is a floral fruity fragrance and it's for women specifically. Now, the top notes are Osmanthus, Jasmine, and May Rose. The middle notes are Indian Tuberose and Narcissus. And the base notes are Amber and Cedar. So I, if you know me, you know I love a good mix of floral, woody, and I'm not so much huge on fruity, but it goes really well in this particular fragrance. So let's get to the sniff test. Again, both fragrances smell really good. Both fragrances are really potent. And for this one, I do get a little more fruity, but also woody. That cedar really does come through in this fragrance. When I'm smelling the Seneca version of it, there is less of that wood aspect coming through and a little bit less even of the fruity aspect coming through. There's more so florals coming through, pushing through versus with the good girl gone bad, there's this balance of floral and fruity and woody all at the same time. And with the Seneca version, I do get much more of the floral up front and a little bit of fruity. I don't get very much of the woody at all. So this would be really good for the women who love floral fruity fragrances that don't need that extra layer of a musk or a woody note in it to make it a well-rounded fragrance for them. 
This is much more that type of fragrance where you're getting the floral fruities, which are usually really good for summer and spring and warmer months. This would be really good for that. I really do like it. It's very feminine. I love the feeling that it gives when you smell it. It just smells like you, a woman just enjoying a walk in the park on a beautiful day. That's what, what I get. So again, they're not trying to make it smell exactly the same. And I actually love that about this company because you have a lot of companies out there that are really trying to make a dupe, but this company is just taking what's already out there and creating their own twist. So I really do like that. Now, the final fragrance that we'll be comparing is probably the most strong fragrance of them all. And that is the Tom Ford Black Orchid. Now, Black Orchid is not for everybody. It is not for the faint at heart. It is a very strong fragrance and it is not something that you wear every day. This is very much a special occasion fragrance. And again, it's not for everyone. Some people think it smells a bit older. So I think some of the notes in there can give you more of a mature scent because of that. But I like the fragrance. So let's hop in and check out the notes for the Tom Ford Black Orchid. So Black Orchid is an amber floral fragrance. I'm gonna have to read the notes for this fragrance because there are so many. It's, it's not your normal fragrance. It's much more of a complex fragrance as you'll find. So the top notes are truffle, gardenia, black currant, liang liang, jasmine, bergamot, Mandarin orange and Amalfi lemon. Middle notes are orchid, spices, gardenia, fruity notes, lang lang, jasmine and lotus. And the base notes are Mexican chocolate, patchouli, vanilla, incense, amber, sandalwood, vetiver, and white musk. All that is rolled into one fragrance. So this fragrance is a very difficult fragrance to create a dupe for especially. But let's see what Seneca did with the Inspired by fragrance. So Seneca is on this arm and the Black Orchid by Tom Ford is on this arm. Woo, okay. So the Tom Ford Black Orchid fragrance, it's much more of an evening fragrance going out a black tie event type of fragrance. It's, it's not your everyday fragrance. It's not even a growing out with the girls fragrance. It's not that type of fragrance either. It's a much more complex fragrance that deserves to be treated as such. So instantly, I smell so many different things. I smell patchouli, I smell the musk, I smell the chocolate, I smell the florals and I smell the amber, but I also smell the vetiver. And that tends to have me lean towards uh, more masculine notes, but it still smells feminine. There's still a lot of floral in it. Usually it's the vetiver, it's the musk, those things, the patchouli, they tend to make fragrances smell more mature to some people. I personally enjoy musks and patchouli in the right doses. This is definitely a fragrance that needs to be respected. Now, comparing the two fragrances, these smell amazingly similar. They smell very close to each other. I'm getting the same notes between the two. And although this is supposed to be inspired by fragrance, very close to being a dupe to the Tom Ford Black Orchid fragrance. I don't get as much patchouli from this one. I don't get as much of those masculine, more mature notes from this one, but it still smells very close. Maybe it's different percentages of each of these notes that are included, but the notes are there. They're not just, they're just not as strong in the Seneca version as they are in the Tom Ford version, if that makes sense. So this is a much more easygoing version of the Tom Ford Black Orchid. It still needs to be respected. It still is something that you would wear in the evenings going out, but you may be able to flex it and wear it for like a, a, a chill date night or something like that, where you really want to make a statement and smell sexy, but not as formal as like a black tie event. You could probably still wear it there. It just probably won't be as out and in your face as the actual Black Orchid by Tom Ford. 
So overall, I love all three fragrances that I was sent by Seneca. I feel like they are all fragrances that I would wear and I would personally enjoy. I feel like the longevity of each of these fragrances is there. The sillage is there. I feel like these are strong performing fragrances. I feel like they are great options for those of us who don't want to pay $300 for a Killian fragrance or $250 for a Tom Ford fragrance. Now, talking about price point with Seneca, Seneca has either a 10 milliliter bottle or they have a 60 milliliter bottle. So with the 10 milliliter bottle, you're going to get that for $29 and your 60 milliliter bottle is going to be $65. So it is a little bit more pricey than some of the other companies that do Inspired by Fragrances, but I do think that it is well worth it. You can tell that the ingredients that they're using, the components of their fragrances are quality. So overall, I would say Seneca is a great brand to try out if you're looking for cheaper options to get familiar scents and also some scents that kind of take it to a different level that you would really, really enjoy. I would definitely say check them out. I will leave their information down in the description box below. So make sure to check them out. I know this is a new brand, but let me know if you've tried them before and what your thoughts are on them. Otherwise guys, it has been truly fun trying out these new fragrances from Seneca. Thank you again for reaching out to me and asking me to test out your new products. It has been pleasantly surprising and I really do enjoy these fragrances. So thank you for sending them over to me. But until next time, guys, it's been fun. It's been real. Love you guys. Bye.